Hi everyone, new series that I will start about the Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I start today because it's Monday, 13th of October, and I think it's been the longest <laughs> Monday I've lived in this passion, which is a flight simulation uh, that I can remember. Okay, this morning I woke up, and this was the first thing that fell on my hands. Okay, what well, well, I'm going to try to answer because I've already started explaining. What I want to try to answer, it's something simple, okay? Will we require a NASA machine to run Microsoft Flight Simulator? Um, I'll tell you during the video, okay? Uh, but just to come to a conclusion, which at, lo uh, at all means to be uh, the truth, Okay, what I've done is just do some investigation. Some investigation out in the market about what we have, what the company building or developing flight simulator has done in the past. And so I can take my own conclusions based on facts, not on speculation as many other people uh, do for free. Okay, so there's a, some investigation job be behind this and I hope that you can appreciate it and if you'd like to leave any Comments, you are very welcome in a polite manner. Okay, then let's go for for how this uh, Monday has uh, developed. I'm a follower of uh, Sergio Costa. Okay, he's a um, chap that is also sharing uh, the same passion as, as we do. He's a more fan of um, helis. And, and I found this article today in a Facebook group that we are both members. Okay, don't want to go very long on it. It's a for me, it's the best review that I've read so far. There are many videos, but this review really deserves uh, a reading. It's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> there we go with the <laughs> legend of ACS Studios, he said. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ACS Studios is the company that first built the Microsoft Flight uh, Simulator. Mm. Come on. So let's open this and let's take a, a look. Onto what I guess that you've already seen a few times, okay? This is the quality that we've got expecting. This is London, this is the, the area where I live. They've just passed through. This is the Isle of Dogs. Here we have a London City Airport, River Thames, our typical clouds, <laughs> very low. Okay, I don't have a clue about uh, what this, this is, but, but you can see it looks gorgeous. Just mm, as the, we, we need to come to a conclusion, and the conclusion is do we need to change our machines and, and is flight simulator uh, going to be quite demanding on the kind of hardware that we have? For that, let me just start giving you some, some facts. The first fact, and bear in mind that I'm not a games developer, okay, at all, it's that I don't think, I do not think it's that difficult to develop a simulator as it is developing other games. Uh, many of you could say, oh yes, we need to draw the whole world. I'm really sorry. Uh, but if you need to draw the whole world, just to see here around at a maximum of 100 miles, being five of them with some detail, while the other 10 that we could say here, the detail is very blur, and the other 50, it's just a gray or <laughs> yeah mist line. Uh, something is done on the development. So that argument for me, it's not valid. We as a, a, a well developed uh, video game only needs to take care about what you are going to be seeing in your screen or in your three D glasses. That's the only thing that they need to take care. The only all the rest, yes, you'll need space in your hard disk or you'll need a, a good. Uh, internet connection to, to stream it, okay? So I'm not going to talk about anything else, but I want you just to, to think about really, is it difficult? Here, moving elements, we only have the GPS. The plane, I would say it's almost fixed because what they are moving is the, um, the exterior view when it's in, in when you are looking at it from the, your, your cabin. Uh, and everything else, it's really smooth. Even now that you are at a higher speed, 
nothing is running against you, as it's happening, for instance, in a gaming, uh, in a racing game, okay? So that's why I think it's not that difficult to develop a flight simulator as it is to develop other kind of uh, games. If, if we put a fixed point here, we'll see really that what it's moving around, it's the scenery, it's not the, the, the plane or almost nothing the plane okay so that's something that we need to to consider i don't think it's that difficult once this said uh well that was my first read about um flight simulator 2020 this this morning it's amazing you have to read it after that there are so many videos that we can find on the internet so you'll have there lots of information but i don't think that none of them is answering with facts uh our question no for for this Am I going to need a NASA machine to run Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? So the next one was uh, that I saw was from Flight Deck to Sim. He's a real pilot from a 737. He got completely amazed. Okay, he's a lovely guy. 90% uh, of what I know about the 737, I've learned it from, from him. So if you're not subscribed to his channel, do it. Do it. This one also really good from AVOD, where we see that the developers have been involved with the community, and that's another myth, if we could say, that um, explain lovers say that um, Microsoft never heard the community, and I must say that's absolutely false. If they haven't thought about the community, we wouldn't have had a ATC, we wouldn't have have a tool to connect with external plugins. We wouldn't have, have a real weather. So that's completely false. Um, explain cares about the community. Well, of course they do, as well as Microsoft uh, did once upon a time. Okay, and as well as Microsoft is doing uh, right now. Probably they don't have the others do not have the resources to pay a holiday for a three days in Seattle to all the members that they've invited. Yeah, but that shows really the commitment that is behind Microsoft team, okay? So there are many others, but we will not call them all, but uh, AVOID, we've got uh, this bad ass, he's really amazing. I really love all his videos. Very geode, okay. They're gonna charge us a subscription to download it. Yeah, subscribe no. and download this. <laughs> everything that no, he that he does. Not. Watch it; it's amazing. And then what we had? Okay, so what I'm going to do today it's just compare, explain. Okay, as a the in my view the number one of flight simulators uh, right now. I'm going to compare something which is in the middle of. Um, explain number one and um, <clears throat> Microsoft Flight Simulator to come, which is still not even in alpha, it's a pre alpha review. What we've, what we've seen, okay, it's in the middle because it's in a beta phase, it's called a uh, fly inside. And then I'm going to benchmark my machine to know which one, which software of these two is uh, taking more care and, and squeezing and juicing really all my, my resources, okay. In the meanwhile, we can see Austin, and I'm sorry, but I'm go I need to, to, to do a comment about this. I really, I'm in love with this guy. I think he's a genius, okay, in my opinion. But I don't think it's a professional at all doing a comparison between four yokes. Uh, you've got things that you need to solve at home. You need to really start thinking about uh, moving to Vulcan, to Metal. It's been two years now waiting, mate two years okay you said that at the beginning of the 29 we would have a Vulcan version yes we are in october then you said that during the year but still you've mentioned that Vulcan is not a silver bullet uh hmm. suspicious facts then again you can do of course with your life whatever you want that's that's my honest opinion and as i don't receive any money from you or from anyone else uh I think I can give it for, for free. And I hope I'm not blamed for, for that. And it's great that you do that, but I don't think it's professional. I, don't, I haven't seen anyone from Yoko comparing his uh, joystick against Branner, which I'm sure that they are more interested on, on doing that, or Logitech, okay? 
just they say how their product behaves and that's it. I don't think it's professional for someone in any kind of industry criticizing or advising about what other people uh, should be doing. Mm, I don't find it. Let's do a new flight and let's try then to establish the the foundations about what I'm going to try to, to compare. Similar plane, uh, Baron, in this case is 58, the other one has the 55. Um, scattered sky, day, and uh, an airport, which really, I've removed all my um, high definition scenery, all my downloaded scenery from the community. This still has something. You've got many other airports that have nothing, and that's probably what would have been fair test but well let's go to the island of El, El Gerro and let's start the first thing that really calls my attention is how really slow explain is loading okay let's look at CPUs and here we go uh, I've got a i7 a well this this model that you can read here and better than I can spell it it has six cores I've got in memory uh, 16 gig, okay? It's not the quickest, but it's not the slowest. Um, what I'm more proud about is the GPU card. It's a 1080 Ti with a 11 gig. I bought it on second hand and it works uh, fabulous. And here we go, okay? First thing that really caused my attention is that without absolutely any plugins, I've got everything disabled, well, uninstalled, so this is a fresh installation of a X-Plane, uh, achieving around, uh, it doesn't get to, to 50, okay? So now as I start moving, this will drop quickly to, to, to 40. Yep, as you can, you can see. Right, so, let's go and fly, and let's discuss a little about this and let's take a look also on my right hand side about what's going on with the, the CPUs. Okay, these are the the ones in column one and three are the physical CPUs, and as you'll see, at the moment only this one is the the core that seems uh, to be really working. I've posted. Okay, come on. Thanks. This is not about procedure, so don't be dramatic on how bad I'm, I'm flying this now, okay? It's about talking about the scenery. Detail. Uh, well, this is the normal scenery that you can have in X-Plane. It's not bad. Oh, come on. Well, I should be flying. Clouds. Really blurry. Okay. I'm not a, really a fan of these clouds. Mm, auto generate the, the scenery. Here we can achieve 60 frames. But let's go back into the cabin. Now just start moving left and right. It's 40, so we could say more or less it's somehow acceptable okay somehow it's not bad at all but what happens when we move this into VR okay let's do it now I hope this is still recording okay where are my glasses come on let me move inside oh hope I will not I will not be able. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, continue. No, let's just let's take a new flight. Okay, because I want to show you the, the frames that we are achieving here. Okay. And the number of frames that we are achieving here is just simply, in my opinion, ridiculous. Well, you can see already on the top, it's 16 frames per second. So, I'm sorry guys, but I cannot fly explain with all my slides to the right because uh, and i'm going to show you that also in a moment 
As soon as I start turning my head, it's like pop, 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 pop. This seems a, a gun machine. It's shooting frames. It's not showing frames uh, smoothly. Okay. Flaps. Yeah, come on. Let's go up. The scenery. This is the standard scenery with no... Um, no contribution, okay, from the community. This is mostly unflyable. So, first time that I bought this computer to fly X-Plane using VR, because only got my own machine couldn't cope with it, I was really, really, really disappointed. It took me almost a whole week reading articles to optimize um, VR for X-Plane. This is just simply ridiculous. The number of frames, as you can see, it's 22, but as soon as we move into the cabin, it's under even 20. Okay, so that's what it does. Let's move back here. I don't care now if it crashes, because what I want to show you is the following. I've got all my slides to the maximum. Why not? Why I shouldn't? If I'm buying a, what I think is a Ferrari, or it was a Ferrari, a year ago, and x had three years uh, old, I thought, well, I'm buying the best machine probably that anyone has been running with uh, x uh, So if I've got a Ferrari and it says in the speedometer that speed that it can reach, it's 400 uh, kilometers per hour, I'm going to try to push it up to that 400 kilometers per hour. And you see that it barely goes up to 50 or 60. Even a motorcycle would be quicker. Mm. Guys, disappointing. Really, really disappointing. Yes, we know all that through many tricks. I made a video about uh, how to optimize this for VR. I think it's in Spanish, but I'll try to do it also in, in English. Guys, if you ask me for, for it, then you'll see that we can achieve at least uh, 40 or 50 frames to make this flyable. Okay? But this is the, the, the trouble with. Um, Explain. It's only using basically one of our cores and the other ones are mostly sleepy. Okay. Uh, Scenaries and clothes are really, well, not bad, but not the best. I think that what I'm going to show you now, it's better. I'm telling you what's my internet connection speed, which I can run. So we can do a test now while I'm recording the the video just with one intention. The new simulator that I'm going to show you, Fly Inside, as I've said, it's still in, in beta, but it's downloading in real time from Bing Maps, okay, so Microsoft Maps, the scenario that is going to be shown. So this is my download speed. What I've read from them, it's that it needs at least, um, at least no, um, um, two megs per second to download the scenery. And this is my upload speed. This is the reason why I never can do streaming. My upload speed is really, really poor. Okay. I'm now changing to a fiber connection just to, to be able to stream mainly. Okay, so this is my internet speed. This is the flight simulator that I'm talking about, Fly Inside. Probably you know him because he made um, two plugins for Explain and Prepare 3D and FSX. So you could fly them in VR, but this is a completely brand new simulator, okay? Uh, and it's just still in beta. So we need to search a beta against something that has been out in the market for almost 20 years, okay? As explained. Then let's open it. The first thing that really calls my attention is the following. It's about how quick it is loading, okay? Fly inside flight simulator, or oh, well, something else. I've got both in my same in the same uh, hard disk. It's my C hard disk. So I've got here explain. I've got here fly inside flight simulator. And uh, now I think that if I do click here, it's an yes hardware. It's an SSD hard disk. So in both places, it should be quick. I already have this here loaded it. Okay, let's go to the same place, same hour more or less, and let's go to same runway, and let's start flying.
we've got similar weather, okay, and start flying. Same plane, same everything. First thing that calls my attention is the number of frames. It's at 60, and it's blocked at 60 just because one reason, and the scenario has been downloaded in real time from Bing. I think that the resolution that we have here is around 3 pixels per square meter. Okay, the autogen is not a something fabulous, we don't have many planes, we do have some. If you want just to know a little bit more about uh, this simulator, I've got a, a full review and few videos are talking about the aerodynamics and flying performance. I think it's pretty cool. I, this is the one that I use when I do BFR flights and you're going to understand this now. Okay, uh, so it's look at 60 frames because my screen is at 60 Hertz, so it doesn't need anything else. But still, there's a difference. Okay, let's come to here. This is the difference. Come on. Too many screens opened. Yeah, it's using all of the at least five cores. I can see that they are being used. Okay, column one and column three physical cores. But still, the CPU doesn't require much more. So I think that this is much more optimized and it's not doing extra calculations that probably are not needed or and, and also the other point is that probably this doesn't have a ai planes with artificial intelligence flying around um it doesn't have atc but the basics are here okay so let's change this now to vr virtual reality oculus rift yep and let's go Okay, look at the frames. It's locked at 45, and I'll explain you why. It's because um, the Oculus Rift that I'm using here, <coughs> it goes at, uh, it's, it has a 90 hertz. So this simulator is using a, a trick, which is uh, they are injecting, that's also more flaps, Textures quality is amazing inside the plane. I mean, okay, in my view, this is a much better out of the box plane being the same. Also, a baron in this case, it's the 55 than than the one that we've got in in X plane. That's my opinion. Okay, the textures quality it's, it's gorgeous here. Uh, also, the textures of the terrain, although they are really poor while you are in the ground. You'll see as it's all been downloaded and streamed in real time from the internet. I found this much more realistic to do BFR flights. Okay. This is the real representation of the Isle of uh, El Hierro in the Canary Islands. It's a, of, um, a volcanic origin. And as you'll see, my frames are always at 45. Constant. And I still have lots of space to improve, okay? To improve it means that it's not going at 100%, but I can see a smoothness. I can turn without noticing absolutely any change on my, in, on my frames at all. Uh, water reflections, they are just, in this case, I think they are fabulous. Okay, how is the chief? It's not the same boring uh, texture that we have with um, explain so out of the box product by product explain it's really great because the huge amount of um, the huge amount of um, plugins that it has and thanks to the community only and exclusively for flying VR this is my sim okay and to feel that I'm really can fly smooth which is what you need when you are doing a uh, flying in, in VR, this is my, my simulator that I use. I noticed that it's using better the hardware that I give them. Okay, so I'm really happy even though it's only a, a beta. But for the purpose of my BFR flying, this is just fabulous. Okay, it looks like flying in, in real. Okay, up to here with fly inside let's close it and then let's go to the benchmark tool so what we've seen it's squeezing much more 
everything. And the GPU even, it's not at the maximum. So it means that if, if we have a more detailed setting, if we even need to add any whatever add-ons in the future, in this simulator, we will be able to, okay? Because it's not using the whole power of, of it. Not because they don't know how to do it, just because they've written the software slightly different. They are utilizing better the resources. Step three, benchmark uh, tool that I've been using for doing this, okay? It's called, um, you've got here the link, benchmark unigine or unigine.com. Uh, you should download this if you are using also VR glasses uh, and it will give you this um, application here, okay? Which is Run Superposition Benchmark. It's a uh, one jig, I guess. I'm not going to run the benchmark because I will show you the results after, okay? But what you could do, it's, you need to reproduce really what you are, what the configuration you've got in your simulators. And of course, um, the other simulator, Fly Inside, was also with everything at the maximum, okay? 8.4, anti-aliasing, uh, super sample textures, it's at the maximum that I can have it. Mm, so here, what you need to do is just try to reproduce something as you've got in your uh, simulator. If you use OpenGL for explain, which is what it uses, do it with OpenGL. If you do it through DirectX, do it through DirectX for any other simulator that uses DirectX. And this will throw you at the end some kind of results. So people that has a low machines, let's say, yeah. Kind of people that can only row at very low resolution explain. If they had, were using my machine, they should be able to achieve an average of 188 frames per second. If you're running this, my machine, okay, same specs, uh, with this benchmark, these are my results. The average of frames per second should be 176. It's with low textures. With medium textures, 140. Okay, if you run it in, yeah, different options. And here you will have always the, the results that you could achieve with your machine. This tells you whether any software that you are using, not just your flight simulators, it, it can be a benchmark to compare against anything, it's worth, and the development team behind it has been good enough to squeeze all, all your resources, okay? In 4K, as we can see, the number of frames, it's decreased, but still very acceptable, 70 frames per, per second. And this is the configuration that they were running uh, BR for future. So textures high and everything in high, um, fly inside, 45, and then they use a trick, which is to inject a second frame per each one, so that they get to the speed of um, 90 frames per second that you can see in your Oculus Rift. In the Oculus Rift S, it's only 80 hertz, so that's uh, 40, where it will be locked, and it's automatically locked by the, by the simulator. In, in next plane, we haven't seen any locked, we haven't seen any trick. It was 20 frames. It was unflyable. You couldn't cope with it. Mm. What this does, and you'll see how really, this is, uh, this is what I was telling also at the beginning. I think it's easier to develop kind of this stuff. Just, let's go to, okay, why not? 4K. Okay, which probably is what most of you advanced users are, are running with. And let's run this test, not the benchmark as such, but just let me show you what it looks like. And the huge amount of triangles that it's injecting, numbers of lights, it's just amazing. Okay. It takes a while, but should be quick. What I want to ensure is that OBS keeps recording all of this, as I hope it does. Yes. Come on. Okay. So I'm coming to cinematic mode, which is this the, the kind of the test that they are running. Okay. 
Well, if we go back to game mode, you'll see. This is my number of frames. It's around 69. I think it was the, the average. Here you can move left, right, up, jump. And you'll see on the right what's the number of triangles that the system is drawing at any point in time. And you can see I can run this really smooth using 4K with a very high detailed uh, textures. I think that this will give by the growth. So it's moving smooth. And the huge amount of objects that we've got here, it's great. Okay, we can see this using... Let me put down the music. If we show the wireframe, yeah. This is what means triangles. This is the huge amount of triangles that are being shown now in, in real time. I guess that this is particles moving here. It's the, the smoke. Okay. Let's go forward. And let's try to put this into a something darker. Okay. No. Let's remove the number of triangles. I think that now you know what the number of triangles are. Here we've got f almost 6 million of in real time triangles. Guys, I don't think that a flight simulator ever needs this amount of detail. 5 million triangles and still running in 4K at 68 frames per second. And it's my machine. You need to do the same test in your machine. But I guess that this being a benchmark tool, it's squeezing really our, our hardware and it's leveraging it, okay? Temperature of CPUs, memory being used, speed of the graphics and the memory, yeah, number of surfaces, 3000 different surfaces. Materials 463 and 24 different light sources. So, conclusion, I think that now, okay, we can come into a conclusion and even yes let's let's move into this <clears throat> next shot and this is in a movie mode so this would be like doing a replay with a um, explain because it's like playing a, a movie mm, then conclusion here as you'll see there are many objects in motion let me find that image where everything starts uh, floating yes this one look at this uh, mirror or glass or this one here so everything every night it's impacting everywhere else okay we had here 25 lights so I think that this is much more complex so that's why I said at the beginning there are more difficult video games to, to to develop. I think this is much more complex than anything else that we've got. Okay. We can now, in theory, close that. I hope that this has continued re recording. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be stuck after almost half an hour. Fingers crossed. But if not, uh, you'll need to download the app and take your own results okay then let's take a look on asobo studios okay so the, i'm going now to answer will we need a nasa uh, computer to develop a, to, to run microsoft flight simulator 2020 if you want a short and a concise answer i would say no we will not need the latest machine of course, more sugar, and now let's go to the grey tones, okay? All the life has a grey tones, it's not always black and white. But if you want simplicity, in my opinion, no. Uh, if you want a little bit more of elaboration, uh, no. And the condition for that to elaborate is that the developers behind need to know how to squeeze our, our hardware. It's so simple, okay? So let's see if people in Asobo Studios have done something in the past that we could have some some faith okay they've got this video game which i think has motion and it's moving in theory smooth okay so i think that they know what they are doing but if we want to compare a little bit more apples with apples 
let's go into this game, the Crew 2. And let's try it. This is a game about uh, racing. Racing all kind of... Uh, now, now. Goes to the stuff. Racing cars, a racing boats. Race. You're piloting a DCB M31. Okay. One of the fastest boats ever created. So this would give us an idea about uh, flying just touching almost the ground, uh, if they would be able to, to cope with it or, or not. I think yes, because that's the other time where you've got lots of movement and lots of uh, objects growing and shrinking in, in the horizon. Okay, but even they've done something, which I think it's worth taking a look. This. Okay, they are also experienced in uh, reproducing something around aviation. I think that this is uh, the park in, in New York. I now forgot my, the name for it. So they've got experience. So I think that they've got the right team. Uh, they've already been developing for Flight Simulator 2020, what I've had it during five years. So I've got faith. I've got faith that I will not need to change my machine and well, just mm, yes, do the benchmark and please, uh, that's it for, for today, okay? Leave your comments uh, below, subscribe and because that really uh, makes my day happy and will help me to, well, will help me, will boost me. Basically, if I notice that I'm being followed by people, I'll be... Yeah, more engaged to continue doing videos like this one, okay? So, have a nice rest of the week and enjoy your night. Bye, chaps, bye.